Okay, in this lesson we're going to continue looking at the sign law. This is called part two, lesson one. We're going to look at a particular part of the sign law called the ambiguous case. Uh, the ambiguous case means this, that for some measurements of a given triangle, there can be in some cases zero, one, or two triangles to represent those measurements. Uh, so for example, just to introduce kind of the concept, if I, if I asked you how many unique triangles could these measurements represent, if I gave you a triangle RST with an angle R of 20 degrees, its opposite side being 20 centimeters, and another side being 25 centimeters, that could actually represent two triangles. Like if you look here, for example, this angle is roughly 20, degrees, if this was 20 centimeters and some other side was 25 centimeters, here's one triangle using the approximate measurements that that could represent those measurements. Uh, another, let me just highlight these, uh, another triangle that this could actually uh, represent would be this one. Here's still an angle of 20 degrees, its opposite side being 20 centimeters and some other side length being 25. These triangles both have angle R being 20, side R being 20 centimeters, and side S 25 centimeters, but as you can see there are two unique triangles with those measurements, so this is represents one of the ambiguous cases. Uh, here's another example. It says for triangle XYZ, angle X is 50 degrees, side X is 10 centimeters, and side Y is 30 centimeters. So if I take, for example, uh, angle X and its opposite side being 50 degrees and 10 centimeters, and have some other side being 30 centimeters, <clears throat> what you would find out is that there is no triangle that can represent this. This length is far too long and 10 centimeters is far too short given the angle to even create a triangle. Uh, that side 10 centimeters will never touch the base. So now the question is how can we identify if there are zero triangles, one triangle, or two triangles that exist? And what it has to do with is the height of the triangle. <clears throat> So, for example, suppose you are given angle A, side A, and side B in a triangle ABC. So um, you may want to always design it so the angle is in the bottom left-hand corner that you're given. So if I'm given this side length, or this angle, uh, this side length, and some other side length, uh, what that's going to do for an acute angle A, four lengths for the side A give four cases. So what I first want to do is explain how to come up with this height. So if you look at this triangle here, If we use the Pythag or sorry trigonometry um, from primary trigonometric ratios, you would see that sine A is equivalent to opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case would be H over hypotenuse, which is B. And if we uh, multiply both sides by B, we'll get that the height is B times sine A. So how, why does that matter? Well, if we know what the height is, if we add an actual value for the height, uh, <clears throat> then we can compare this length to find out how many triangles there are going to be. So if we, different different lengths of side A will give four different cases. So for example, if side A here was shorter than the height, so this side here is shorter than the height, it will never touch the base. So case one looks like this. Uh, if side A is less than B sine A, and this is just the height of the triangle, <clears throat> then we have zero triangles. So then zero triangles exist. Uh, case number two, what would happen if this side here was exactly the same as the height? So in other words, it's exactly the same as the height. If it was exactly the same as the height, it would just touch at this right angled triangle right here. Uh, so in that case, and that's case two, so case number two is if A is equal to B sine A, then one triangle exists. And I could get even more specific, uh, that's a right triangle. Okay. Uh, next case, what happens if this length A, so again comparing everything to the height, and we know that the height at this point in time uh, is <clears throat> B times sine A for this triangle. What if this is longer than the height but shorter than this side B? So it's longer than the height, but shorter than side B. So roughly this length right here. What would happen is we'd actually have two triangles. There'd be a triangle out here, longer than the height. And there'd also be a triangle in here because it's shorter than side B. So that would represent two triangles, much like the first thing we looked at in the lesson. So uh, if it's between the two, or in other words, 
if the height is less than side A, or if A is greater than the height but shorter than side B, then two triangles exist. Okay? And finally, what's the case if side A is really long? Or in other words, if side A is way longer than side B. If side A is longer than side B, what will happen is it will make a triangle out here somewhere. Okay, and you'd see the connecting to the base over here. But it would only make one triangle because it's too long to connect to the base uh, to the left of the height there. So in this case, here's what it looks like. If A is longer than B, then only one triangle exists. Okay, uh, that's, the that's the ambiguous case. Uh, what happens if we're given an obtuse angle A? So the same thing, but an obtuse angle A in this case. There's only two cases, and we don't have to calculate the height in this case. So for example, if this uh, side A here, if it's longer than side B, it would make a triangle. It would make this triangle, but no other triangle. So if it's longer than side B, uh, so case number one is if A is greater than side B, then there's one triangle that exists. Okay, And the only other case is what would happen if side A is shorter. So if side A was really short like this, uh, you can see that it's never going to touch the base, regardless if it's shorter or even if it's equal to. So in that case, and that's case number two, if A is less than or equal to B, then no triangles exist. <clears throat> so let's get a little bit practical. Uh, this lesson's a tiny bit longer than typical. Uh, here's the practical part. How many unique triangles exist if, so if we're given angle R is 30 degrees and side S is 12, uh, how many unique triangles exist if R is 5? So let's say if R was 5 centimeters, for example. What we need to do is determine the height. And the height here is going to be 12, because sine 30 is h over 12, so it would be 12 times sine 30. And 12 times sine 30 is 6 centimeters. So if this height was 6 centimeters, and this side A was 5 centimeters, there would be no triangles. So th zero triangles, because 5 is less than 6. Uh, let's say that this side length was 6 centimeters, if they're both equal. Uh, as we discussed earlier, if it's 6 centimeters and they're both equal, it's going to create this exact triangle, the right triangle. So in that case, there would be one triangle, and that's because 6 is equivalent to 6. If it was 10 centimeters, <clears throat> what you're going to see, so if it's this long, if it's longer but shorter than the 12, so roughly this long, what you're going to see is there's a triangle here, if it's 10 centimeters, and a triangle over here if it's 10 centimeters. So in that case, again, if we're seeing that it's 10 centimeters, there's going to be two triangles. And that's because the length 10 is between 6 and 12. <clears throat> so longer than the height, but shorter than the opposite side. Uh, if it's 15 centimeters, so a super, super long uh, side R, it would be really long and it would only touch way out here, but not on the inside because it's longer than 12. So in that case, there would be one triangle. And in that case, the reason is because 15 is greater than 12. Uh, so that's one example. Last example and then some key ideas would be dealing with <clears throat> an obtuse triangle. So if this here, whoops, uh, if this here was, let's say, 10 centimeters, then it would be shorter than 15 centimeters, and it would never touch the base. So in that case, there would be zero triangles, and that's because 10 is less than 15. <clears throat> and if it was 20 centimeters, it would be long enough to touch the base somewhere, so that would make one triangle, and that's because 20 is greater than 15. Uh, so final key ideas, important notes about the ambiguous case. The ambiguous case which means zero, one, or two unique triangles only needs to be checked. So you might want to know when you need to see if the ambiguous case is happening if you're using the sine law to solve for an angle. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, here's another way to put it. You only need to check the ambiguous case if you are given a side length and its opposite angle and some other side. So in other words here, if you were given some side length, its opposite angle, or an opposite side and angle, those are opposites, and some other side length. And, you, and finally, key idea number two, when this is the case, it's always helpful to sketch a triangle like this, where the uh, angle that's given is in the bottom left, and the 
side that uh, here is is on the elevating part and then the opposites there and uh, you might notice for those who want to memorize this there's the word ass right there 